Hi, I'm Sally Glass and welcome to Art This Week. On this week's episode, we continue our coverage of the Modern's exhibition, Mexico Inside Out, Themes and Art Since 1990. Today we speak with the artist Eduardo Abarroa about his work in the exhibition. Now for Art This Week. Hi, I'm here with Eduardo Abarroa at the Fort Worth Modern to discuss his work at the new show, Mexico Inside Out. Thanks for being with me, Eduardo. Thank you. Um, right now, we're standing in front of your piece called Portable Broken Obelisk. It's the mm -hmm. oldest work in the show, mm -hmm. and um, it's, it's one of your most famous. Um, mm -hmm. Would you first start by telling us when you encountered Barnett Newman's piece that it's based upon? I didn't encounter it. I, I, at the time, I, well, I, it wasn't so easy for me to travel, so I went to New York and didn't find it. Uh, I, I had the wrong location, so I had to do it uh, via uh, the library, and I took the measurements of the original from the library without seeing the work. So you were so I saw it on the photographs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw photographs before. Okay. And I th I thought I want to do this project. I was trained in urban sculpture to make steel structures for the street, let's say, and I wanted to make this uh, sort of pirated version of. Well, you know, infringe a little bit on the copyright of something somehow, yes. but uh, uh, to take it to another context meant for me to change the materials of it. And uh, I decided to play with uh, informal economy in Mexico. Okay. So, so basically I, I, I didn't, hadn't seen the original, and this is not the same size as the original. It's about two thirds the, the size of the original. Okay. And the shape is also a bit off because the measurements were apparently not not, I mean, the information not, was not accurate, not completely not accurate. Not quite as precise as you thought. Mm -hmm. So you, you touched briefly on the materials, but would you, would you mind elaborating a mm -hmm. little bit more on, mm -hmm. on what you used and sort of what your mm -hmm. influence was in your decision? Yes, uh, one of the things that I was interested in is uh, what is uh, the context of, uh, of art and in particular public sculpture, uh, modernist sculpture. and. Uh, I, I sense that uh, it was interesting, the uh, immense, it, the, the original is a technological prowess, it's very heavy, the, the, the point where the two structures meet is very small, mm -hmm. it's very heavy and still, you know, it's a fantastic work of art. And I tried to make a, a version of it that, uh, but, but this, this really big steel structure correspond to a building that is also built with you know very permanent materials it's right. all sort of monumental if and it was already a monumental on its head but it, it still had this permanence to it that right. I, I, I found very intriguing and also that relate to a sort of economy that makes it possible in my country the economy as you probably know is not as strong as the American uh, we do have uh, of course, buildings and everything like everywhere else, but we do have also uh, a very strong uh, informal economy. Okay. It's an economy that, for example, does not pay taxes or is okay. not uh, th th has no records. Sometimes it may be stolen goods or pirated goods, or so it's not regulated. And this is very strong in Mexico. Some people say that probably 40% of the economy is in, in this state of informality, oh, wow. which is a lot. Right. So I tried to. Uh, make some connections between Mexican art uh, and American art and also these two different ways of how an economy will function. No? This very organized way in which you have it in the US, everything is sort of very well annotated, it's a system that works. Uh, and, and ours which is much more spontaneous and cha somehow chaotic also. No? I, for me this has social implications too. but that that is something that you get on your own from the work, okay. I guess. The other thing I wanted to ask you about this work mm -hmm. is obviously we're here at the Fort Worth Modern now, mm -hmm. it's in this beautiful setting, all mm -hmm. that good stuff. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. when, the, when you first did the piece, it, mm -hmm. it was at the outdoor markets, correct? Was it first set up at the outdoor we markets? We put it in a, we, at the time we had a, 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 a place, a house that we made shows in and we oh, showed okay. it first in that house and then we went to the, uh, the market with this, uh, uh, when you have a building and then it's corresponding sculpture, I wanted to make the market, which is blocking the whole avenue, a very, very long avenue. 
and I, and I put this sculpture as if it were corresponding to the, to the market. So how do you feel the setting affects viewer interaction with the piece? Well, that was one of the important parts of the work for me, that is that people in the market didn't, were not interested at all didn't in the sculpture. Didn't even stop. They didn't even stop. <laughs> well, some, some did, but for example, I was asked if I was going to sell everything. If I had sold anything, I would have had to give someone money. They have these leaders in these markets. Right. And they were like very like, you know, secretive and trying to <laughs> ask for their share. Oh, but okay. I'm like, I'm not sharing, I'm not selling anything. So, right. oh, okay, I don't care. So put it wherever you want. So as long as you weren't selling. As long as you don't <laughs> sell. But even if it's public space. Right. You know, it's a it's sort of negotiation that happens always in some places of the world uh, of cities, no? Okay. And, uh, and people, I asked, they made a little bit of a survey of what they thought and they were like, well, it lacks fantasy. They expect something more really? voluptuous or decorative or something. So I was also figuring out uh, some of the dryness of modernist sculpture too and how it would, I guess that for me the, the piece is a marker of that very big division between uh, the idea of art for many people in different contexts, you know, how it can be completely right. opposite. Whereas in Barnett Newman, one senses that he had an idea that this could be absolute sort of, sort of geometrical absolute archetypes no? right uh, even if it, it is also a, a, some anti-monument it still has this permanence this sort of geometric uh, classicism if you will that uh, didn't just didn't interest people in Mexico of course the color is the color of uh, of the outdoor markets right. which is also for some reason very related to to Mexican identity within Mexico, this color is called Mexican pink. Really? In in, in Mexico. Okay. It's called uh, something else elsewhere. <laughs> and uh, but these markets have also a history because uh, in Me in pre-Hispanic Mexico, the the markets traveled uh, right. all over the uh, in pre-Hispanic Mexico, and this practice has kept up, you know, has survived uh, through the country. So even if it, you don't you don't see anything that's particularly vernacular about it, it is uh, a historic continuity right. of many, many centuries. I really enjoyed reading your essay in the catalog. Mm -hmm. um, you. You, you've shown with a lot of the artists that, that are mm -hmm. in the Mexico Inside yeah, Out show. Them, yeah. um, could you talk a little bit about some of the relationships you formed over the years with these artists? Well, um, sure. I mean, briefly, because it's right. uh, like I could tell you <laughs> hours of gossip if you want. <laughs> but uh, no, I, uh, I guess it's uh, an interesting group of artists that have come here that Andrea has put together uh, some surprises and some are not surprises because uh, some have been working very extensively for a long time mm -hmm. and, and their work is very strong always. I mean, I just saw some of the works by Orozco right now and. and one of them are still surprising after I've seen it for 20 years or so. No? Wow. It's like, and, and also with the young people, uh, Edgardo Aragón and everything, uh, it is always uh, very refreshing to see that the, the Mexican artists or artists related to Mexico are always coming up with interesting stuff and, and makes me very optimistic to have someone from the outside of this context to try to figure some, some things out. You know? yeah. Uh, the interest in sort of uh, figuring out the context, no matter if it is Mexico City or if it's uh, a place in, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Oaxaca, like Edgardo was doing, or, or someplace else, uh, like Francis Alice was trying to figure out. I think that it is important uh, in this generation of artists, uh, at least the one in the 90s, to figure out that it was a sort of an exchange from the nationalist point of view to one that was much more applied to a context without the nationalist uh, emphasis. Okay. Uh, it is imp important because uh, when you talk about nationalism, it, it gets coded in a very particular way, you know, right. what is Mexican is this. But when you are actually into a context, uh, in a, a specific context in, in, in 
in our societies, and Mexico is not the exception. Even in the U.S., you, if you were trying to talk about uh, American nationalism, probably you'll see uh, some imagery, and then you right. go to Echo Park, and it's completely different. Or right. to the same in Mexico, no? You go for the local and the context, which has a lot of different uh, conflicts, interactions, and uh, and that tends to be more rich than this nationalistic sort yeah. of overview that somehow puts something strange together. Right, definitely. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you. We want to thank Eduardo for speaking with us. For more information on the exhibition, go to themodern.org. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. I still got your post.